Hello everyone. Uh, it's the first video on the time machine train, you know, the Back to the Future train. And I pulled all the parts out to have a look at them. I'm surprised a lot of it's in really good shape. Yeah, it's, it's some work. But I'm glad um, I checked out first before I take your money, because it may take a little bit of time, you know, a few weeks to get them back up to where I can mold them. So I thought I'd shoot some video, shoot some video to show you what it looks like so far, the parts. Sometimes it's neater to see on video than it is the pictures, which I'll take that too, but I think I already did. So, all right, here you go. I'll show you. Well, we start off, here's the wheels. Those look fine. No problems there. And then here's the sides and the top of the train. This goes up underneath the front, underneath this part here. This part's got some damage. I don't know if it's expanded or contracted or what, you know, so, but that needs to be fixed. Then here's the, um, the side doors. Fortunately, I've kept these through the years in one of my supply uh, uh, Tupperware things, whatever you want to call it. And I had these laser cut way back in the day. I'm glad I kept them. They've just been sitting at the bottom of the box. So I keep all my evergreen plastics and, and shit like that. This is the padding that goes inside the train. I'll probably redo those because they look kind of rough to me. And of course various things like the this goes in front of the front wheels and the stuff that goes on top, the tanks, where the flux capacitor goes there. Uh, one set of lights so I can flip it to use on both sides. I'm, I'll make a left and a right. That's one of the things I have to do is mold that and make two of them, then make it has you know places where the lights go in and maybe hog it out underneath, you know, um, stuff like that. Uh, make it light ready. The very front and other parts. So, and part of the suspension. There's little pieces missing, and some of it needs work. Like these are the the, uh, the pipes that go on the top of the train. They kind of run to something. <laughs> I can't really say what it is. I don't remember. And this little doohickey, which I think hooks to the bellows. That bellows there. That's part of the interior floor. That's part of the boiler inside the interior. Top. Uh, just various parts of the sunroof. That's what's missing is the sunroof part. It's, it's, it's got a curved sunroof on it or like almost like a, uh, an atrium or something. And I gotta find that piece. Maybe it's buried in the... Um, I, th I thought I had one where I got those parts from. I'll have a look and see. Not enough to make something. Anyways, so um, backs, front, little side flat fields. This part, I cannot remember where that goes. It's funny though because I can look at these and pretty much remember where it goes almost every part you know in the back of the train you know, you can see a little fixing on that oh no it's in pretty good shape I suppose and the big box part of the train yeah it's a little damage there a little fixing no big deal this guy here believe it or not will probably take the most to fix because all these little points are sticking up or broken I made them all out of uh, wrench shape which when you get this thin with it it's very brittle so what I'm going to do is make one mold it and make castings out of resin out of all of them and I think in the long run it'll be stronger so this is what attaches the two trains together you know the, the box car in the back to the engine and uh, this is the time displacement circuits they fit here I got some interesting pictures of the interior which I never had before so the only thing I have to uh, make sure of is is like the magnets here in this I'm not sure if they're the right size I think they are you know I was looking at pictures I thought they might have been a little bigger but I could be wrong so I hope I'm wrong because I don't want to have to rebuild the damn thing you know cow catcher another thing I do you gotta do is get some of this this uh, evergreen strips channel because a lot of it's come off around the, the sides of this thing and everything you know and this is what I'm really happy about a that I still have it um, and B that's still in perfect condition and uh, I'd like to thank Frank Cerny, a friend of mine, who kept this for a while and then decided he didn't want it anymore. So um, asked me if I wanted it back. I said, absolutely, you know, because I sold my original one. So obviously I'm making one for myself, you know. But, uh, but I, it may not cost as much as I thought. I was quoting about 800 but I might go down to about 750 on it. I know, ooh, ah, big $750, $750, big fucking deal, right? But hey, seven, it's $50 you save, right? So yeah, there it is. Let's try to get a high angle here. And, uh, and there you go. So that's the train so far. Um, 
Uh, give me, I'll need a couple weeks to get it all in order. I remember just about 90% of where everything goes. A couple of parts that'll come back to me as I do it and look at the reference again that I have. And uh, that'll be fun. It'll be nice to have one on the shelf again. The only thing that you'll have to get, though, is a stand. I might make a little cheap a little stand, just a couple of leg things that it sets on. But what I'm going to do with my personal one, which I'm not going to make for the kid, is make like railroad tracks and gravel around it, you know, something like that. Uh, for my personal one, that's what I did with my original one. And have it kind of floating above it. And you buy one of those one twenty fourth scale DeLoreans if you want to put next to it, whatever you know. Probably the railroad one would be pretty cool. So, um, all right, I guess that's it for now. And I'll keep on making these videos as they go along. Bye bye. Hopefully, it won't take as long as the before. How long did the Star Destroyer take? Fourteen months. Nope, way. Um, so, all right, we'll talk later. Bye.